Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. May the abundant grace and glory of God as we celebrate the Eucharist Supper with Jesus and our fellow Catholics be with each and every one of you. This Sunday's Gospel parable teaches us more about the heart of God. They show us vividly that God cares about each one of us. He will not rest if only one sheep is missing and one coin is lost. They show us that he cares deeply enough to go out his way to save us when we are lost. They show us that God rejoices when we return to him as the shepherd rejoices upon rescuing his sheep and as the woman rejoices upon recovering her coin. Every sinner who returns to God causes a joyful celebration to break out in the halls of heaven in the heart of the Father. On the other hand, the Pharisees' idea of God is of base. They see God as harsh and judgmental. The truth is that God feels anxiousness in regards to sinners, not anger. He wants them back. He doesn't want to condemn them. The Pharisee cannot understand this because they have painted their image of God in their own likeness. They enjoy condemning others for being less perfect than themselves because it feeds their vanity making them feel superior. And like those Pharisees, we sometimes fail to see God's mercy clearly. We tend to be judgmental, so we also tend to project that wrongly onto God. This wrong conception puts a wall around our own hearts so that God's love cannot reach in and transform us. And it also puts a wall between us and other people. We become so obsessed on their faults that we become blind to their value, to value as God's children. There is no easy way to tear down these walls. We have to do it with the help of God's grace, one brick at a time. But the more bricks we take down, the easier it gets. The wall gets weaker as it loses bricks. We can make progress in this area by doing two things. By purifying our critical thoughts and by using frequently the sacrament of confession. First, by purifying our critical thoughts, we actually have control over which thoughts we pay attention to. For example, when we notice the dedication of someone we work with and feel a sense of admiration, that's a worthy thought. We should dwell on it, feed it, and draw strength from it. 
But when we catch ourselves looking down on someone, or when we start feel dislike for someone because they do better job than we do, those are unworthy thoughts, and we should turn away from them. This week, when critical and judgmental thoughts come knocking, let's purposely send them away. And let's welcome and entertain the good thoughts, the ones that reflect God's own thoughts. Second, by using frequently the sacrament of confession, this message of God's attitude in today's gospel towards sinners gives us the secret of the sacrament of confession. Unfortunately, our fallen human nature, edged on by the devil's temptations, tend to see confession as something unpleasant. We tend to avoid it or not to look forward to it. But think about that for a moment, for a minute. Have you ever gone to confession and felt worse afterwards than you did before? Of course not. God didn't invent the sacrament of confession in order to torture us. He invented it because he loves us. It is not meant to be drudgery, nor is it being, nor is it God being manipulative or intimidating. Rather, confession is God's way of making it as simple and direct as possible for us to come back into the flock after we have wandered off. It is the perfect way for us to let him take us back into his arms, back into his home after we have turned away from him. God knows the devil will keep sowing doubts in our hearts about whether or not God really can forgive our sins, especially the particularly bad ones that we are most ashamed of. God loves us so much that he gives us the sacrament of confession to cut right through the devil's deceptions. So if you are not using this great gift regularly, every month, for example, you probably need to examine your idea of God. Do you see him as your loving father whose mercy and care are limitless? That's how he wants to be seen brothers and sisters, because that's how he is.